day one. That's definitely what we need this season. Because we're trying to at least match what we did last year or push on that. And it's not been a good start. And again, it's only been two games, but nonetheless, it's not been a good start. So if we're going to try and finish third in this league that is stacked, and then if you're going to try and win a, a trophy, again, it's going to be very difficult in England. And then try and do something in the Champions League. Like, we need a proper team, and at the minute, we, it doesn't look like we have a proper team. We definitely need that number eight, and we need Hoyland to come in. And, you know, I'm going to say fire in goals, but yet again, I can't really say that because I'm trying to keep my expectations quite relative to who he is. Okay, Mr. Rasmus Hoyland. We all know he is Manchester United's new striker. We all know how Manchester United have struggled in the first two games. Although, especially in that, in that second game against Tottenham, what they were able to create chances, there just wasn't really anyone up there to convert them. I've made my video or my reaction on Rasmus Hoyland already. Let's see what Tifo Football have to say about them. Um, about him, sorry, I'll leave the link to Tifo Football in the description as per usual if you're not going to show them some love afterwards. But without wasting any more time, guys, let's get straight into it. In August 2023, Manchester United spent £73 million on a 20-year-old centre-forward. He's now played for four clubs in the last 20 months. Yeah, f 73 million is crazy. Every time I think about that, it hits me. 73 million for a striker that's yet to score like 20 goals in a proper, proper uh, league, in a top five league is insane. He does have the talent. There's a lot of promise there, but 73 million is crazy and a year ago he was sitting on the bench in the Danish Superliga. But who is Rasmus Hoyland? How good is he? And how did his unlikely rise to the top of the game happen? W video, W video. I like this. Hoyland is from Hersholm, which is an hour's drive north from Copenhagen in Denmark. Okay. It's a quiet and peaceful place. The schools are good and the local amateur football club is Hersholm Usserod Idrettsklub, also known as HUI. Manchester United's new striker joined HUI when he was four years old, and he was one of the better players among his peers, with his physique proving a particular asset as he grew and moved through the age groups. Ability-wise, though, he did not stand out. There were other players in that group just as good. Rasmus wasn't particularly fast or had extraordinary technical capabilities, says Christian Moreau. That's kind of insane. Of course, um, you're talking about such a young, young age. There's definitely time to develop, but one thing... I got from the reaction we made about Hoyland was the fact that technically for a striker, I thought he was very good. And physically, I also thought, sorry, physically, I thought that was the most impressive thing about him. A striker that's already was 6'2", 6'3", he's got pace to burn for days. There are certain aspects of his game that can improve. I think his first touch could definitely improve, but he's got um, he's got an ability there to, to be quite, um, quite decisive on a one-on-one -on -one if he drifts to the wing. For example, his build-up play isn't the worst and his finishing, especially at times, has looked very good. But, you know, there's, as I said, there's still some things that he can develop in his technical game. So it's very surprising to see these type of comments. Oh, the club's sporting director. He was just someone that loved to play football. Rasmus is and always has been a hard worker. Every chance he could, he was to be found on the pitch outside of training hours. Emil and Oscar, Hoyland's younger twin siblings, began training at wow. HUI a few years later. Together, the three became so football obsessed that their father, Anders, a carpenter by trade, renovated the basement of their house, transforming it into an indoor pitch. <laughs> when Hoyland yeah, was that's amazing, yo. That was... twelve, I imagine having a pitch in your house, bro. That's nice. HUI's partnership with Copenhagen-based top flight side Bronber meant joining their academy was a natural step. HUI have since struck up a similar arrangement with FC Copenhagen, where Hoyland moved after a few years. Mm -hmm. It was at Copenhagen that Hoyland's potential began to be realised. He made his professional debut at 17 and that season produced 16 goals in 23 appearances. Ooh, now, I, I did my research on Hoyland. I, my research did not stretch that far back. I did not know this. And you know, this is why I like to make these type of videos. I like to make, of course, the reaction that we did, where there's no commentary. It's just was, it's just us, sorry, analyzing football, analyzing the player's ability to play football. But then when you get videos like this from a Tifo football, where it is a bit more detailed, a bit more research, I used to love to make these type of content back in the day. If you're going to watch my channel, this is the type of videos I used to like to make. I just don't have the time to make these type of content. So it is nice to know 
or at least nice to have these this further research done. 16 goals in 23 games um, for Copenhagen at 17. W. W. But of his 32 senior games for Copenhagen, just three were starts. From his debut against Aarhus in October 2020 to his final match 14 months later, he was usually a substitute. In his 791 minutes for Copenhagen, there was not one full 90 played. It is an indication of what has been... Yeah, this lack of experience is is going to be something Ten Hag definitely is going to have to deal with. Again, 17, you don't really expect him to start that many games anyways, but he didn't play any 90-minute games. To me, that's a red flag. Um... He and then last year, of course, Atlanta. He uh, he was also not a starter. Another red flag. So um, definitely something to look into. Hopefully, it's not it's, it's not going to be a deal breaker. Hopefully, uh, he, again, he can um, get into the next system quite well. Hopefully, he un he's able to perform for United. But these facts, the fact that he doesn't have it, even that much experience, one for age and two for lack of playing time, is definitely a red flag that we should be thinking about. Again, let's keep our expectations for Hulan this season quite low. Um, but it's really a double-edged sword because you say you say something like, let's keep our expectations for Hulan this season quite low, but then he was worth 73 million. And then again, we're Man United. And again, we don't have a striker. So it's like the expectations can't really be low. It's just we have to keep them relative to who he is as a player and not compare him to the better one better strikers in this in this league like your your Erling Haaland's your even like a Callum Wilson like let's not compare uh Hoyland to those players because it's not going to end well for us at all has been interpreted in some quarters as a lack of belief in Hoyland among Copenhagen's senior staff his technical ability was questioned and his physical attributes overlooked as a result, it was not especially surprising when he left in January 2022 for Austria's Sturm Graz and for a fee of only 2 million euros, albeit with a sell-on fee included. It wasn't a decision that aged well, and because Hoyland, as a fan, grew up sleeping under an FC Copenhagen duvet, it was a major disappointment. But he would make his point quickly. He made a blistering start for Sturm Graz, scoring four goals in his first three games and making an immediate impression in Austria's second city. He left a mark on opponents too. He will be worth every penny, said Tyrol defender Raphael Buenek after facing Hoyland. He's an absolute machine. Compared to what Manchester United have paid, the amount Sturm spent may seem insignificant, but Hoyland was their most expensive signing for the best part of 20 years. He is also the most successful example of a recruitment strategy focused on signing underappreciated young talent and turning those players around for a profit. Once he arrived in Graz, Hoyland's drive, work ethic and self-belief shone through. He's not a quiet guy. He already arrived with a very good self-esteem, but in a positive way. And that's what we need in that changing room, man. There's there's so much talk at the minute of United's changing room being a toxic place. There's a, already a lot of talk about United United not having the mentality. So we need players like this in our team. You know, enough of the Anthony Martials of this world, enough of the Di Maria's and Mickey Terrence of this world. We need players that are going to come into the team and bring the ma the right mentality from day one that's definitely what we need this season because we're trying to at least match what we did last year or push on that and it's not been a good start and again it's only been two games but nonetheless it's not been a good start so if we're going to try and finish third in this league that is stacked and then if you're going to try and win a, a trophy again it's going to be very difficult in England and then try and do something in the Champions League like we need a proper team and at the minute we, it doesn't look like we have a proper team we definitely need that number eight and we need Hoyland to come in and you know i'm going to say fire in goals but yet again i can't really say that because i'm trying to keep my expectations quite relative to who he is and what he's done so far Andreas Schicker, the club sporting director told the athletic amazingly Hoyland would only stay for seven months he was too impressive too soon, and when Atalanta offered 17 million euros for the player, over eight times what Graz paid for him, it was just too good a deal to turn down. Sturm would also earn 3 million euros from his move to Manchester United through a sell-on clause. He has a great future at the highest European level ahead of him, Schicker says. His mindset, his personality and his skills, with all his speed, power, depth, force and quality before the goal, makes him a total package. When he joined Atalanta in August 2022, he became the sixth most expensive signing in the club's history. 
Even so, he quickly impressed veteran head coach Giampiero Gasparini, even though Atalanta's 65-year-old head coach is not prone to lavishly praising players. But Hoyland's first few goals in Serie A characterised all his abilities. A poacher's tap-in against Monza, a delicate chip against Bologna, a breakaway against Salernitana, and most memorably, a thunderous strike against Spezia that can... That versatility, again, they're talking about the range of goals and as they've just described to on different football, a tap-in, uh, one where he chips the keeper, another one where he runs in behind, one where he scores outside the box. That versatility, the ability to score these type of different goals is going to be essential. At the minute, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I am praying that Hoyland's him. I am praying that Hoyland can be the guy to come to Man United and help us do something special this season. I am praying, and I mean praying, that Hoyland can really come and help us. Again, as I said, trying to keep my expectations relative low, but it's kind of hard to do that when we desperately, desperately sorry, need a striker, and this guy is an exciting player. And in off the bar. He's extraordinary, Gasparini said. You could see straight away that he was very gifted. Hoyland was also showing significant improvements in individual areas. He may not have been especially well known for his speed in his early days, but over time it developed into a yeah, devastating yeah, yeah, weapon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Technically, he's always showing us different things, Gasparini said at the time, stressing how much of a self starter Hoyland was. Rasmus gives his all in training all week. There are times when I have to hold him back. <laughs> but there were complications. Atalanta were always aware that goals would bring attention and interest from other clubs. Yeah. After setting speculation raging with the hat-trick against Finland in March's Euro 2024 qualifiers and two more goals against Kazakhstan four days later, Gasparini felt Hoyland lost his way. The rumours turned his head and the compliments dazzled him a bit, he said. He's going to have to learn how to handle them and fast. He's young and can't think he has nothing else to learn. Even that slight rebuke came with a tribute to Hoyland's potential. The ladder he's on is infinite, Gasparini added. Yeah, um, actually, important comment here from Gasparini, because as I said on that reaction that we made about Hoyland, that video that we did before, his potential is very, very high. I don't think that anyone that's truly watched Hoyland can tell me that his potential isn't high. He's got a very high potential. And that fee that United paid is like us banking on that potential. I just hope he works out. <laughs> I just hope he works out, man. Otherwise, it's going to be peak for us. It's going to be like another Maguire. Pause. <laughs> Knock on wood. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But again, that potential is definitely a hefty fee. And hopefully he's able to perform. Shortly before Atalanta became the second club in a year to make an enormous profit on a forward who has emerged at a startling rate. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. But anyways, as per usual guys, I'll leave the link to Tifo's football channel in the description. They make amazing content. If you want to go and show them some love afterwards, please do so. This is the end of this video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all those things to help me grow this channel. You're much appreciated. And as I said in all of my videos, daily football content. I'll see you guys soon.